Welcome to the Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Welcome to the Table. We discuss issues of God and culture, and our topic today is movies. Not just movies in general, but in particular movies that have a biblical or a Christian theme to them. And we're going to ask the question about how should we think about these movies? Uh, how should we watch them? What's going on? You know, when you do a movie on a biblical topic, uh, you get all kinds of reaction. And if you have any doubt, just take a look at the latest Christianity Today review of the movie that came out uh, recently, Noah. Here is the review of the movie, just this, about six, seven pages long, longer than most reviews. <laughs> And here are the comments on the movies, okay? When I ended up – this is, this is another 16 pages. So um, if you want to get reaction, just say you're going to do a topic on a biblical subject and you have a built-in Richter scale meter. So my guest is Naima Lett. I'm going to let her introduce herself, tell, her, tell us a little bit about her. We've had her before, but she gets to repeat her story for us here. And then we're just going to dive in. So Naima, tell us uh, why in the world would I ask you to help us discuss this topic? Well, thank you for asking me to discuss it. I appreciate it. And the reason why would be that um, my husband and I have a production company in mm -hmm. Hollywood. It's called Let's Rise Productions. And um, I'm an actor and producer and writer, as well as uh, we're in full-time ministry. Mm -hmm. um, we have a ministry, Hope in the Hills, in Beverly Hills. And um, we live and work and minister in Hollywood. Um, I am, we, we make movies, we are in movies, we have friends that are in movies, we you know minister people in movies, like the movie industry is our industry um, all the way around. So that's why I am here to talk about it. And you also just happened to graduate from Dallas Yay! Seminary at the same time. There might not be too many people <laughs> who have that illustrious combination of, yes. of vocations in their life. Yes, I'm so excited. Uh, I was the first uh, graduate in the Master's in Media Arts uh, tract um, here at Dallas Seminary. So I am, I am thrilled to be back. I really am. And it's a real pleasure to actually have you in studio. The last okay. time we did this, we had you via, yes. via technology and Skype. That's love right. Technology. Love but it, we're love glad it, love to it. have you here. Well, you know what our topic is. Our topic is movies, and we've had a spate of them recently. Yes. Uh, I just uh, I took one day to dedicate myself to this brave podcast, brave, brave <laughs> and in one day, in sequence, <laughs> I saw Noah, God is Not Dead, and the Son of God. Now, I have yeah. to say, I haven't had this much popcorn in a long time. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, yes. and so it was, it was quite an experience. My my all my all my, all my kids were, Dad, are you really going to do this? Oh and, and after it was Thank over, you. they called me. And, Did you survive this? I thought I was. Where was I going? That I have to worry about <laughs> surviving. But anyway, yeah. so we so we've seen the movies that we're going to be talking about. Yes. And uh, both of us have seen all the movies that we're talking about. Yes. And so uh, we're going to take a dive in. Let's let's start off here. Um, when I go to see a movie yes. that has a biblical topic, what expectations do I carry that maybe I shouldn't carry? A very good question. So um, the expectations that I have seen, and particularly when it comes to a movie like Noah or kind of a, a larger Hollywood mm -hmm. blockbuster movie. Um, the expectation that I've seen from our Christian brothers and sisters um, that maybe we should not have is that it will actually be um, jot and tittle, you know, biblically accurate. Mm -hmm. Meaning, um, I, I do not believe I, and I work in Hollywood, yeah. um, I, don't, I do not have the expectation that um, the Hollywood studio movie that comes out is going to be jot and tittle. Mm -hmm. I just don't have that expectation. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the time I take my cues from the filmmakers. Mm -hmm. So um, from the filmmakers and the studios, because a lot of times there are, there are going to be interviews, there's going to be marketing, mm -hmm. um, people are going to talk about it. We started hearing about Noah over a year and a half ago. Hmm. So a year and a half ago I wrote a blog mm -hmm. and said, hey, there's a flood of Bible movies coming out, mm -hmm. please don't expect them to be biblically accurate, meaning mm -hmm. jot and tittle, word for word, mm -hmm. you know. 
whatever have you. Noah is just the first. Mm -hmm. There's Pontius Pilate coming out. There's a Cain and Abel story coming out. Mm. Um, there is um, another, I think, Moses story coming out. There, there's a plethora of mm. Bible movies coming out between 2014 and 2015. So we need to get good at this. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say we have a wonderful, we have a wonderful opportunity to have a whole lot of dialogue about the Bible uh -huh. in the next two years, you okay. know, two to three years. Mm -hmm. Right now, the slate is about two years out mm -hmm. because technically speaking, depending on how these next couple of years go, mm -hmm. we'll see if they'll continue or not. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't believe our expectation should be that when we go, and particularly if the filmmaker has already said that it's not, mm -hmm. you know, if the filmmaker says the biblical account can be found in the Bible, mm -hmm. that's a pretty good cue mm -hmm. that we probably should not have that expectation mm -hmm. that the filmmaker has somehow made it biblically accurate, mm -hmm. like jot and tittle, word for word, that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, so, so I go in and so watch a biblical based movie that's not about the Bible, and uh, and go from Doesn't there. Does sound crazy? Yeah. I mean, it sound it sounds. Yeah. But here's in in um I had the wonderful opportunity. I blogged about Noah on Friday, mm -hmm. um and um. <laughs> Got comments. <laughs> yeah. Got comments like, like you, you, you read her. You comments. read her mail. <laughs> yeah. Um, but here's here's what here's what um, what came out again and again. And I said, when it's all said and done, um, there's going to be creative license taken. Mm -hmm. um, when stories are created, um, they're going to fill in the gaps in mm -hmm. terms of what what is known and what is not known. Mm -hmm. um, and the filmmaker, depending on what kind of story they're trying to craft, mm -hmm. is going to develop that story accordingly. Mm -hmm. And we, again, can take our cues from the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. In this case, with Noah, the filmmaker, um, the filmmaker, you know, pretty much kind of put it out there that he was doing a fantastical tale. Mm -hmm. He wasn't trying to follow, um, kind of, you know, the and no, I mean, literally, the account in Genesis is so small. Mm -hmm. um, but he wasn't trying to stay very close to yeah, that. A Ten-minute though... feature film doesn't work, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily. Yeah. Um, but you know, we also have, say, like you mentioned, mm -hmm. Son of God. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, but I'll tell you this, there were a lot of Christians that were really upset about that because they mix things and, mm -hmm. you know, like different different things that Jesus said at one point or another were all kind of mixed together and scenes were kind of mixed. And, and so people would say, well, that's not jot and tittle word for word Bible either, mm -hmm. you know? So it's, it's like, okay, well, you know, you win if you do, you win if you, I mean, you lose if you do, you lose if you don't. Right. Like it's, I think, one. One of the hurdles mm -hmm. that we have had to to jump across is our family of faith already has a certain amount of distrust with the Hollywood system mm -hmm. anyway, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whether or not we're making Bible movies or not, right. there is already a mistrust mm -hmm. that we are somehow going to mishandle mm -hmm. the information. And people are just waiting for that opportunity when we do mm -hmm. to say, you got it wrong. Mm -hmm. Right, and, mm -hmm. and now we're going to tell you why you got it wrong and how you got it wrong. Mm -hmm. So we're already kind of pushing a boulder up a hill, mm -hmm. so to speak. But then, you know, when you get something as fantastical as Noah, you mm -hmm. know, that's really a fantasy mm -hmm. in, in this regard or whatever have you, um, then it really kind of affirms the belief by some of our family of faith that see we this can't is, trust Hollywood. This is to why do we this. can't trust you. Yeah, you know, this is why we cannot trust you. Well, I tell you what I've thought about in, in in coming up to this week in this spate of movies and knowing that we're headed into a into a sea of the Bible, if I can keep the mm -hmm. metaphor going. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, I look back at movies that most people regard as classics and even as representations of the best of biblical movies. Uh, I think of the Ten Commandments, for example, Cecil B. DeMille. And that tracked along with Exodus to a certain degree, but it, he, he did. He had that creative license. license. Yeah, All exactly. Of them have taken exactly license. right. And so, <laughs> not a so single I, one of them. Has but been. here, here's the curveball in this for me. The yeah. curveball in this for me is if you look to see what the Bible does with its own stories. Hmm. Okay. Um, you will see creative moves being made from one account to the other. 
Uh, they don't ne necessarily repeat, jot, and tittle the story the exact same way. Most of the things that I deal with on a regular basis within mm -hmm. the Gospels, yes. as we deal with the relationship between Matthew, Mark, and Luke, see a story retold from a different angle with features in one version of it that you can't see in the first version That's of good. it. Yeah. And yeah. so so I sit there and I say, well, if the Bible to bring out points can work with narrative gaps, et cetera, collapse ideas, mm -hmm. remove characters mm -hmm. from one scene versus the other, I think of the Jesus' meeting of the centurion who asked for his slave to be healed. And in one account, it's a conversation directly between the centurion and Jesus. In the other account, the centurion never physically shows up. It happens through messengers. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, which yeah. version of that story am I taking and what am I going with or okay. how do I deal with that? So each writer has made a choice either to simplify the story or to give you all the detail, but the point of the story is still there. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if, in thinking about the standards that you've talked about, if we shouldn't, if we've asked the wrong question, if I can say it this way, rather than asking how accurate is this in relationship to the Bible, rather than just asking that question, that's mm -hmm. an important question to ask, we should also ask, are the values and the issues that the text is raising addressed in this movie? Gotcha. And how are they addressed? Um, and so. I, I, I've, I've come ready today. Um, here, here is an email that I got that shows you this tension, I think, uh, pretty well. I got this email from, uh, I'll just say, a president of a, of a Christian organization mm -hmm. that reflects a conversation we were having by email. He knew what I was going to do this weekend, and we had gone back and forth in light of some things he had sent me initially about some of the movies I was going to see. I'm just going to read through this and whole. Oh, I don't normally do this, but I think this is a particularly illustrative example. Here's what this person said. They're going to remain unnamed so I can protect the guilty. Um, I learned a great lesson on staying focused on the most important thing. On March 21, 2014, the, mo the movie his organization had been promoting. God's Not Dead, came out in a limited number of theaters around the country. It was a success, and I was so glad we jumped on board to promote it. On March 28, 2014, the movie Noah arrived in theaters with one of my favorite actors, Russell Crowe, playing Noah. I had heard some negatives about the show not being true to the biblical account, but I wanted to see it anyway. Late in the evening, someone I trusted very much posted these words about the movie on our internal pages for our organization's leaders. Here's the quote. Total garbage and blasphemy. Get the word out to other Christians before they waste their time or money as we did. I feel tricked. It was horrible." Close quote. Without hesitation, I immediately went into reactionary mode, sent his comments to everyone I knew, posted it on every social media page to which I had access. That was the mistake. One of the emails I, uh, one of the emails I sent was answered by a friend who has helped our organization recruit people for the organization. Her comments pointed out my mistake. She said, I believe this email poorly represents the excellent ministry you have at your organization. I have not yet seen Noah, but I plan to see it as I plan to see many movies, whether they tell a story based directly on the Bible or not. Regardless if I enjoy the film or not, and regardless of the objective quality of the acting and the storytelling, I will not consider it a waste of time or money. Hollywood is getting back into telling Bible stories, and that's exciting. I'm thinking Ben-Hur, The Ten Commandments. And then This is in bold. This is a wonderful opportunity to have a meaningful conversation with people who would never normally want to talk about God, the Bible, or anything religious. The arts are always great conversation starters. This seems like something your organization would be interested in rather than encouraging people to avoid. That's the end of the emphasis. With all due respect, you have an obligation as the head of the organization to set a good example of winsome, clear-thinking Christianity. If we as believers can be this threatened by a piece of art based on biblical events and not even claiming to represent them exactly, after all, they did publish a disclaimer in this regard, then it is no wonder we fail so miserably at kind of communication when there are more significant issues to be addressed. I have huge respect for you and for your organization and simply encourage you to keep striving towards excellence. And then this is the reaction of the leader to whom this email was written. Lesson learned. 
NOAA offers a great opportunity to engage others in this conversation, but we need to see the movie in order to intelligently enter the conversation. Unfortunately, we will have to decide between the importance of being prepared or voting with our money. An article about NOAA said it best. The article was called, NOAA, A Prime Opportunity to Talk to Pagans. When Jesus Comes, It's Too Late to Choose Sides. And that's the end of the email. And I think that's a... That, that's kind of the issue, as yeah. I see it. And what I would like to do with some of our remaining time yeah. is to talk about how NOAA can do this. Um, yes, there are problems with NOAA, the watchers, okay? You want that? The watchers, Did you those want that? guys. In fact, <laughs> I, I, now I work in biblical studies, so I know a little bit of what, what's going on here. And for people who don't know the background to the watchers, is it's a development of the theme of the Nephilim yeah. in Genesis 6, which some people believe are pictures of angels who have physically taken on characteristics, who mated with uh, females on the earth. Mm-hmm. That's one of the views of that passage. Not the only view, but that's one of the views of that passage. And that particular interpretation is actually very ancient. It is reflected in Second Temple Jewish texts around the Bible, around the time of the Bible, uh, works like uh, First Enoch and other such mm-hmm. works. So, now, granted, uh, they they aren't uh, how can I say this X Men <laughs> figures, okay, action figures or something like that, which is what uh, the movie made them into. Yeah. But you do have issues like this, and I actually thought think uh, on an analogy here when um, when uh, Mel Gibson had the problem in the Passion about how to portray Satan. Right. Okay, the question is how do you portray something that's unseen? And make it visible in a visual medium. A, you know, most people who just attend movies may not even think about that question as an artistic problem. It, mm-hmm. it is a slight, yeah. just a minor detail, yeah. artistic problem, right. considering the conflict with Satan is kind of central to the Jesus story. Right. So, how do you do this? How do you portray the figure of the Watchers as an overlay to an antediluvian time period? That kind of thing. That's what the the uh, movie maker was was wrestling with. And granted, I might not like the solution, Mm -hmm. but okay, all right, take it with a grain of salt. He made choices. choices. Move on. Now, here's another one. I'm Mm -hmm. I'm giving you the negatives first. Um, My sense is, this may, and people can feel free to disagree with me on this, my problem with the portrayal of God in this movie is, is that God was somewhat of a deist God. Yeah. He was removed from the action. People prayed to him. He never answered, that kind of thing. And that description of God actually works if you discount part of the twist at the end of the movie. Okay. Okay? There's a very important scene towards the end of this movie, Noah, in which there's a discussion about what Noah was supposed to learn by the experience God took him through without talking to him. Okay. Okay? And, and so, actually, the key core human issues that the movie raises are wrapped up in this scene. It's actually wrapped up in a scene that we don't directly see in the biblical story, because in the biblical story, although we have people riding on the, on the ark with Noah, you know, we don't have the question of where did the children come from out of Noah's, and the movie goes in this direction, another choice. Yeah. And we have what I call an Abraham Isaac moment in the mm-hmm. midst of the movie in which Noah makes the decision, is he going to remove the two children that have been born because they weren't supposed to be on the ark to begin with? Or is he going to let life continue? And it's a choice between mercy and law, if I can say it that mm-hmm. way. Justice. And justice. And so, and, and divine command, at least as Noah had conceived of it. And here's the twist. The twist is, is that in the discussion about Noah's decision not to do what he was inclined to do, which was to kill the children, but to allow them to be alive, and I'm sorry for ruining part yeah. of the movie to do it, but we have to do this. Um, <laughs> The, warning, the, warning. <laughs> the, the remark is made, the remark is made, God wanted you to learn. And so the life lesson of the story is put in the in the in this midst of this conflict. And the movie couldn't have been clear about the sinfulness of man. It literally yes. is portrayed all the way through from the beginning yeah. to the end. Yeah. 
we see characters wrestling with the presence of this all around them. We see characters wrestling with the fact that all of humanity is going to be wiped out. We see a global flood. Yeah. Um, all those things happen. We see an ark designed pretty much as the Bible lays it out. So we've, we've got that dimension too. So there are very biblical features in the story. And the question is, will we wrestle with the human divine triangle questions human, the humans I live with, and God questions mm -hmm. that the story raises. That's what I think the movie goes after. Um, I don't know how you read it, but that's how I read it. And, that, and, and, and I found myself in the midst of the movie as these issues were coming up pondering the questions about humanity that the story as the filmmaker was telling it and as I was familiar with it in the Bible were raising gotcha. that combination. Okay. I um so um in your wrestling and I so appreciate you using that term um as a moviegoer I think for me I went in with kind of real um low expectation mm -hmm. um in terms of how any of this was going to match up um, biblically or whatever have you. Mm -hmm. um, it was, you know, it's the same thing that I go in when I, you know, go to see Transformers or mm -hmm. Superman or Batman or X Men or you know any of the, you know, Avengers, whatever have mm -hmm. you. Um, I went in to to enjoy a feature film, mm -hmm. um, and I I um, I did not um, as as they were going through the story. Of course, I know the biblical account, um, but I looked at it very much like. The biblical account inspired the filmmaker to um, to go off into his own imagination and creativity, mm -hmm. and which was a very dark reality uh, for for these characters. Mm -hmm. But here's the key: you're right. Even as it, if I'm going through the story as a film goer, mm -hmm. and I'm just invested in that story, mm -hmm. I have to wrestle with that combination because they kept bringing it up. Mm -hmm. um, that through line of mercy versus justice. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the characters are saying things like that. Is mm -hmm. this just? Well, this is what's just. Is, you know, and, you know, and, and there was this, this tension between um, we, are, you know, we are going to be punished because we have, we have done wrong. Mm -hmm. We have sinned. We have failed. Like, this is our punishment versus the grace mm -hmm. you know, of the creator, mm -hmm. you know, whatever have you. And so there was this wrestling and tension, and the filmmaker did make that, the, you know, however the other pieces of the puzzle come through. Mm -hmm. And if you just look at the arc and the, you know, and the, the way that a movie goes anyway, mm -hmm. he followed all of the points of a, of a, of a good movie, of mm -hmm. a story, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so, um, and everything in between, but that's what he kept bringing us back to. Will you choose justice? You know, are we going to choose what's just or, or this merciful um, type of thing? Very, very similar, I would say, to Les Mis. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, which of course was nominated for the Academy Awards last year, mm -hmm. um, which also had Russell Crowe mm -hmm. um, in it, you know, starring in it as well. And it was that, that sense of, you know, the law or justice versus mercy. Um, and I think that's a very real conversation that, um, that we can have in 2014, mm -hmm. you know, in the 21st century. Um, to because people are asking that question every day, at least where I am. Mm -hmm. Where is you know this good God mm -hmm. that you all speak of, mm -hmm. right? Is He just removed, and we're all just making things happen on our own? You know, if there is sin, if there is, I mean, if there if there are bad things happening, you know, is He you know is He just going to let them happen? We just had another earthquake. <laughs> <laughs> on Friday, yeah. Earth starts moving and shaking. <laughs> you know, people are like, "Okay, like, are we getting closer to the big one?" You know what yeah. I mean? And five point one, just a oh minor, my god, just a minor five. shake. <laughs> and okay, so and and let me let me just tell you a little something. We're so used to it now. We were actually um, with uh, a group of leaders that we meet with and are accountable to, um, kind of insiders uh, every month, and we meet month to month. And um, we're so used to it now that. Things started moving, and like we paused for a second, and everybody's like, "Is that an earthquake?" Yeah, it feels like an earthquake. You know, shaking a little bit. Like nobody jumped under a table. Uh -huh. Like nobody went to the door. <laughs> I said, "Oh, I said, you know, this is not good, people." Like we, <laughs> like, like.
like, you know, we should we should at least react. I said, let me just go and stand in the, you know, under the door post, like, you know, we're supposed to. Because. The only earthquake I've ever been in is a little 3.5er out oh, there you. when I was out there once teaching at Talbot. Did and you I, feel woozy? I was, I was in the bed. I was at night. And the bed started to shake, rattle, and roll, and I went, oh, this is interesting. And my next remark is, this must be what an earthquake feels like. (laughs) And this is it. And sure enough, I got up after it all the shaking stopped. I went to my computer, and lo and behold, about two minutes later on a little CNN thing, a little 3.4 or 3.5 or something like that earthquake hit the Los Angeles area today. I said, well, good. That's my first one. I can chalk that one up. I've had that that experience. I've had earthquake. That's right. And that's all I want. (laughs) That's no more. Well, they're spreading now. Yeah. You know, my, my family experienced one in Georgia uh, about a month ago. So I said, well, hey, if they're coming to Georgia, you may as well move to California. <laughs> as you kept, you kept saying, you exactly weren't coming to right. California. Yeah, but, yeah you know, the only place to go is the Arctic unless you live in Chicago. <laughs> You've already been there anyway. Yes, me uh, sorry yeah, to get so, us No, topic. no, that's all right. That was, uh, but those types of natural events happening bring up these conversations of is God removed? Is he involved? And, you know, are is he just, you know, a God who will allow, you know, mm-hmm. these bad things to happen or whatever have you? Or, you know, uh, how can you as a Christian, like, you know, how, how why is this personal? How is this personal? Yeah, who you've are you ra- serving? You've raised a question here that I think is important. That, that, that there are two directions I want to go. So I'm going to put this mm-hmm. – I'm going to go to this one place quick and then come back to where we're going. Yes. Um, you know, you've mentioned the the kind of fantasy world that the movie maker in this case put together for us that, that kind of operates on the edge of a perception of reality and these kind of beyond the normal things that go on with the way the watchers are handled and that kind of thing, that it almost has a fantasy element to it. I do think there is a, a negative that comes out of that that Christians were sensitive to that may have triggered some of their reaction to the movie, and it is, mm-hmm. if I treat the Bible and its content as a fantasy, then I may not end up taking the Word of God seriously. Mm, gotcha. And okay. uh, that is a problem. Uh, because even though I think part of the reason that it was being done was because the world, as it's described in the Bible before the flood, is a different world than the world that we live in. People lived longer. Uh, there were other kinds of things going on that don't normally happen. That kind of that's what I think he was reaching to portray. Mm-hmm. But I think he did it in a way that sends the wrong signal in some ways about what the Bible is. And so when he describes, as he did, uh, the Noah story as a kind of Jewish midrash, I mean, the, the, as a movie maker, he's Jewish, he understands right. midrash, he mm-hmm. understands what interpretive and expanded story is, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, when he says it that way, he's putting the text in a, in a category into which it, it may not actually belong, and that's, that's harmful. So that's a side comment. I want to get yes. that out. That, that is a negative. Yes. Okay, but here's the flip side of something to think about. And, th- and now I'm going to raise this question. Are Christians tone deaf when it comes to Hollywood movies? And here's why I want to raise this question. When someone like the movie maker who says he's not a part of the church, mm-hmm. uh, he, you know, he doesn't have a religious bone to pick in his body, he's an atheist, that kind of thing, depicts a biblical story and we see what he wrestles with, we have the opportunity to hear how the Bible is being heard by someone who doesn't have a relationship to the God who's talked about in the Bible, by his own admission. Exactly. Is it important for us to see what that portrait of God is? Isn't it important to wrestle with what he sees and what he doesn't see? Isn't it an opportunity for a conversation to talk about the nature of God given that portrait? And so the summation of it is, what I mean by being tone deaf is, if we go to a movie to hear and see what we want to hear and expect to hear, might we miss getting the chance to listen and hear how someone else is seeing the biblical material and learn how to engage people who are coming from that place as a result? Yes, absolutely. Um, We, I believe, and especially in this 21st century, I believe it is imperative for us to be able to understand 
the community and the audience and just people like we have to understand the community that we are in and be able to hear and see you know what what um, they believe and then be able to dialogue um, most of the um, most of almost all of the ministry that we do now is relationship based mm -hmm. and it's building relationship hearing people engaging and being a part of that conversation i love the way uh this writer put it it's something that you know i know i had been saying you know on all of my different um mm -hmm. posts i know it's something you have been saying mm -hmm. as well meaning we need to be a part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to see what it is, you know, the portrayals that are coming out and be able to bring our perspective to the table. We are completely discounted mm -hmm. when we haven't even seen the movie. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can't even talk about the art mm -hmm. if you haven't seen it. Mm -hmm. You're just basing it off of what other people said and and that is not, you know, a that that is not um, something that is considered authentic, mm -hmm. right? So we have to be able to experience the art, jump into the dialogue, and again, set our expectations accordingly. Mm -hmm. I listened to the filmmaker. Mm -hmm. I read about him. I knew, just as you said, mm -hmm. that he was Jewish and also atheist, mm -hmm. and I knew that he was creating you know, uh, something that's been in his mind since he was a little kid. He said the story has fascinated him since he was yes, a child. Yes, so he it was a that, child. So it's he like he hasn't been paying Sunday attention school. to the story. He's very much paid attention. He's been it's captivated been a passion by passion project. It. Exactly. He tried to get, he's been trying to get this done for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. So it's something that he committed to, he committed his life to, and wanted to create, and you are correct. This is what he created based on what his idea of God is, mm -hmm. and the story he wanted to tell mm -hmm. now as a believer you know of christ and a follower of christ and someone who loves the lord very dearly i'm able to come to the table and say this is your view this is my view let's talk about it mm -hmm. right and then here's the thing that we do we pray for the filmmakers mm -hmm. we pray for the people because Without a shadow of a doubt, what we have seen again and again and again is that as we pray and we begin to build relationships, like we are welcomed into the conversation because we aren't, you know, taking up the rock and stoning people, so mm -hmm. to speak. We are, you know, we we're now we know what we're talking about. Like mm -hmm. we have to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we gotta know what we're talking about. You can't come to the table and not, you know, not have any clue about what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But um, having known what we're talking about. We're able to come to that, come to the table and have the discussion, mm -hmm. and I think that that is so valuable. And what's key um, in terms of our community moving forward, and if we actually believe that we are going to make an impact on the culture mm -hmm. as it is, if we completely walk away from the conversation and say, "Hey, we don't like that. We don't like the way you portray." you know, your idea of God, because mm -hmm. mind you, you are portraying your idea of God, that mm -hmm. doesn't have anything to do with my God, mm -hmm. right? I'm not offended, because mm -hmm. that's your idea, mm -hmm. right? Like, I'm not and offended And should I be that. surprised that it doesn't match? I mean, I mean, you know. Okay. Particularly once you've told me, like if you've told me what you believe, yeah. okay, yeah. I get it. Yeah. That doesn't affect my faith one iota, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I still know who my God is, mm -hmm. and my God is not going to be um, he is not changed. The God of the Bible is not changed because of the movie Noah. Now, caveat, mm -hmm. are movies influential? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, are, you know... That's even more reason to be talking about them. Hello. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Um, and that's why, that's why we advocate seeing it, jumping into the conversation, you know, getting with some friends, talking about it. And again, our friends run the spectrum. They're not just all in the box, you know. Mm -hmm. I love um, how Bob Briner put it in his book, Roaring Lambs. It was like, you know, we as a community of Christians kind of took our ball and left the sandbox. You mm -hmm. know, it's like if, if Hollywood is dark, it's because the light left. Mm -hmm. um, we are now saying, hey, come, you know, come bring the ball back into the sandbox. Let's play together and, and figure this thing out together. You know, because when our voice is missing from the conversation, it is very dark. Mm -hmm. It is very, very dark. And we've seen that, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> we, That's we, right. We, we see what it looks like when the light is not present. <laughs> like, we've seen it. Um, and uh, so that's very important to us. I'm so glad that you you brought that up. I wish we weren't tone deaf. I'm hoping that we become less tone deaf mm -hmm. um, and, and less... Um, 
less negative against everything Hollywood. Yeah, I, 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 what I, well, I think what we're talking about here and kind of pleading for, if I can say it that way, because I do think we're t- making it clear we have a position on this, is a kind of nuancing about how we view Hollywood movies to not just it's all good or it's all bad. Right. And and let's let's get in and talk about what the stew is that we're looking at. I mean, what the mix is. There's some of it that is positive, there's certainly some of it that can be criticized. Right. It should and should be, but that's good critique. Yes. Good critique is sitting down and saying, this is what I liked about it. These were the kinds of questions that it raised that were healthy and worth considering. Um, this is what I liked about it artistically. This is what I didn't like about it. I thought this they missed it here. Yeah. What, what movies don't get that treatment on a regular basis? And artists, if you do that with sincerity, mm-hmm. appreciate that exchange. That's part of the conversation they're actually working to evoke. That's right. And if you're completely indifferent to what they did, take it or leave it or whatever, that, that, that to an artist, I think, is probably viewed as a complete failure. That is a failure. That is so a um, so the, 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 the interaction that we have here becomes very, very important. And so the plea is, let's have some, let's have, let's come to the table. Yes. Let's Watch the movies that are impacting our culture. Let's learn from what their perception of God is in mm-hmm. terms of how to have the conversation and what the issues are that need to be addressed, and then let's go for it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let, let's let's engage and let's engage with with much less anger yes. and much less frustration. <laughs> Shouldn't be surprised, but but let's engage as if I were talking to a neighbor who I'm called to love and care for right. and, and love well and and talk about hey let's let's think about the perspective on life that that is being portrayed here and what's what's healthy about it yeah I'm, I have to say I was um, somewhat surprised um, by the attacks mm-hmm. um, by just saying I was going to go and see the movie mm-hmm. Um I was very surprised, and then on my social media, what literally happened is, you know, I said, "Okay, we've we've got to be able to dialogue respectfully." Mm-hmm. Um, so then the persons stopped attacking me, but started attacking one another mm-hmm. to the to the point where I said, I just had to start deleting, 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 and just finally say, "This is not that forum." Mm-hmm. But what I yearn for, as a body of believers, what I yearn for is for us to be able to speak with one another about issues that we may disagree about in a way that is still loving and respectful. Mm -hmm. I do not come to any table Mm -hmm. and expect everybody at that table to believe everything that I believe. Mm -hmm. And then I don't stop loving you because you believe differently, Mm -hmm. right? right. We we should be able to have the dialogue and, and learn from one another and grow with each other and do life together without getting so upset that you don't agree with me. There are two key love commands in the Bible. One of them is love your neighbor as yourself, and it's very clear from that text that we're not supposed to draw lines and limits to this. And the right. second one is, a little more radical in some ways, love your enemies, that that's what makes a Christian distinct right. from the way the world loves. Yeah. The world loves selectively. Well, I'm afraid we've learned how to love selectively, mm-hmm. and we're reflecting more of what the world does than the than the than the way we should. And we and, and I understand, I get where, where our perception is we're defending God and His honor and His Scripture, and I, I get that, believe me. I'm, yeah, I'm in yeah. enough fora and dealing with the nature of the Bible and the way the Bible's reacted to to know what that involves. Mm-hmm. But but there still is a way to do it. And, and uh, I like to say truth matters and tone matters too. And uh, the Scripture says I'm supposed to be ready to give a defense, but I'm supposed to do it with, with reverence and gentleness. Mm-hmm. And I think those two characteristics sometimes are lacking, and when we do, um, we actually detract from the very message we're trying to yeah. – promote in the very person that we're trying to promote. Well, that's that's kind of a, a, a view of Noah. You want to say anything else about Noah before we move on to the um, other things? Well, um, again, just uh, if, <laughs> if, if you already know <laughs> mm-hmm. that seeing a movie that you want to be biblical, uh-huh. if you already know that if you go see a movie that you want to be biblical and it's not, 
just know you're going to be upset, mm-hmm. right? But yeah. if if there's a space, mm-hmm. if there is a space that says, "Hey, I, you know, I have the capacity to see this movie as I see any other movie mm-hmm. or any other film that comes out, then by all means, you know, go and then join the conversation. Mm-hmm. That's what I would say, hands down, go enjoy the, con- you know, in- invite people into the conversation and enjoy the conversation. Thanks for listening to The Table Podcast. Join us next week for part two. For more podcasts like this one, visit dts.edu slash the table. Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth. Love well.